السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one whom we praise. We praise Him and we thank Him. We seek refuge in Him from the evil of our own souls and the evil of our actions. Whomsoever He guides, none can misguide Him. And whomsoever He leads astray, then none can guide Him to the truth. And I bear witness that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah alone and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is His last prophet and messenger. O you who believe, fear Allah as He should be feared and do not die except as Muslims. O oh mankind, fear your Lord who created you from one soul, and from that soul, its mate. And from those two, spread many men and many women. And fear Allah concerning those whom you ask your rights from. And fear Allah concerning the wombs that, have, that bore you, for verily, He is ever watchful over you. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah and speak the truth. He will guide you to righteous deeds and forgive you of your sins. And whomsoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has achieved the greatest achievement. When the Prophet ﷺ was chosen by Allah, the Prophet ﷺ, he said about this, نَظَرَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَىٰ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ كَافَةً فَمَقَتَهُمْ جَمِيعًا إِلَّا بَقَايَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Allah looked at all of the people of the earth, and he disliked all of them, except for some of the remnants of the people of the book. ثم اختار من أهل الأرض العرب واختار مضر منهم واختار قريشا من مضر واختار بني هاشم 
من قريش واختارني من بني هاشم فأنا مختار من مختار من مختار Then Allah chose from amongst the people of the earth as a receptacle for the revelation the Arabs and from amongst the Arabs the super tribe of Mudar and from Mudar the tribe of Quraysh and from the tribe of Quraysh the sub tribe of Bani Hashim and from Bani Hashim he chose me so I am chosen from chosen from chosen from chosen Ja'a an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa nasu fi jahiliyatin amya the people were in a sickening blinding amount of ignorance when the Prophet ﷺ was sent to them. One of the greatest acts of worship that was started by our father Ibrahim ﷺ. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Ibrahim and announced the Hajj, announced the pilgrimage to the people, people will come to you walking and riding on every form of vehicle. يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ They'll come from every deep crevasse of this, this earth. The people of Jahiliyyah had taken this pristine act of worship and they had added to it, subtracted from it. They had introduced into it acts which were reprehensible from a theological standpoint and even from a social standpoint. They added idols around the Kaaba. They drew pictures of their idols and their deities inside the Kaaba. Even the people would come to Mecca and they would make tawaf naked. And a woman would place one hand in the air and the other over her privates and would say, Al-yawma abdu ba'dahu aw kullahu wa ma bada minhu fala awhilluhu. Today I'm showing all of it or some of it. And whatever I show of it, you can't have none of it. And she would make tawaf like this. And these actions continued even during the lifetime of the Prophet ﷺ. He would go to pray while living in Mecca and these idols would be there. The people would come for Hajj and they would continue these practices. These theologically morally reprehensible practices. Then the Prophet ﷺ was chosen. And he was given followers who supported him. And he made his migration to al Medina, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the truth and distinguished the fires of kufr. And in the ninth year of the Prophet ﷺ's hijrah, he sent Ali radiallahu an to Mecca. And la yahujju ba'd al ami mushrik wa la yahujju ba'd al ami uriyan. After this year, after Mecca had entered under the sovereignty of the Muslim state, he sent Ali radiallahu anhu to make an announcement during the Hajj of the ninth year. After this year, no polytheist is allowed to make pilgrimage, and no one naked must come and make pilgrimage. Then in the tenth year, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the pilgrimage himself. وَقَدْ دَخْلَ النَّاسُ الْإِسْلَامَ أَفْوَاجًا People had come in droves. They came. Tribe after tribe, group after group, each of them coming to meet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina to ask about Islam, to accept Islam, and to give their bay'ah and their allegiance to him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as he was there, and he announced his intention to make hajj, the news got out. And so people came from all over the Arabian Peninsula to see and ask themselves, what will the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do next? يقول جابر رضي الله تعالى عنه والحديث في صحيح مسلم أتى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ذا الحليفة The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم went to ذا الحليفة What some of us might call Abyar Ali and there are other names for it The Miqat of المدينة فصلى فيه الظهر والعصر والمغرب والعشاء وبات ليلته He stayed there and he prayed ظهر عصر مغرب عشاء and he slept for the night قال صلى الله عليه وسلم في الصبح أتاني آت من ربي 
فقال لي يا محمد صلي في هذا الوادي المباركة وقل عمرة في حجة Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an angel came to him last night. The Prophet sallallahu said, an angel from my Lord came to me last night and said, O oh Muhammad, pray in this blessed valley and say Umrah inside of a hajj. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to the masjid. He took a bath. He went to them. He went on his ihram. He went to the masjid. He prayed two rak'ah. And then he got on his camel. When he made his talbiyah, he said, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ عُمْرَةً وَحَجَّةً لَا رِيَاءَ فِيهَا وَلَا سُمْعَةً I answer your call obediently, O Allah, with an umrah and a hajj. No ostentation are showing off therein. He then got on his camel. فَلَمَّا ظَهَرَ الْبَيْدَاءَ And when he went on the small mountain, which is now part of the highway that you drive over when you pass by the Hulayfa, and you're next to the minaret, and you see it on your right hand side, remember that's where the Prophet ﷺ was. فَلَبَّ فَقَالَ جَابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَنْهُ فَأَهَلَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ So the Prophet ﷺ announced the talbiya, announced tawheed. Jabir uses this word. The Prophet ﷺ said, لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك Answering your call obediently, O oh Allah Answering your call obediently There is no partner due unto you For you belongs all praise and all blessings and all dominion you have no partner. Why did Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhu say, Ahalla al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bil tawheed? Why did he say the Prophet sallallahu made the talbiyah with tawheed? Because the people of Jahiliyyah, the people who had taken the faith of Abraham alayhi salam and changed it, had created their own talbiyah. They used to say, Labbayka, Labbayka Allahumma labbayk, Labbayka la sharika laka labbayk, إِلَّا شَرِيكًا هُوَ لَكَ تَمْلِكُهُ وَمَا مَلَكَ They used to say, answering your call obediently, O Allah, you have no partners except for a partner that you own and everything he owns. You own him and everything he owns. So Jabir radiallahu anhu, when he talked about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's talbiyah, he said, أَهَلَّ بِالتَّوْحِيدِ He announced tawheed. The main call of Islam, the reason why each and every one of us are here today, to negate partners from our Creator, to deny the right of worship to anyone but He who created us, and He who sustains us, and He who does everything for us. Jabir radiallahu anhu, he says, that when the Prophet ﷺ started his talbiyah, the people started to follow. And I looked out to my right, and I saw people madd al-basar, as far as the eye could see. And I looked to my left, and I saw people as far as the eye could see. And I looked in front of me, and I saw people as far as the eye could see. And I looked behind me, and I saw people as far as the eye could see. وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَيْنَ أَظْهُرِنَا the Prophet ﷺ was right there in between us. يَنزِلُ عَلَيْهِ الْقُرْآنِ The Qur'an being revealed to him at that time. وَيَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ And he knows its implementation and its explanation. It's a very important point. And he knows its implementation and its explanation. يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ فَمَا عَمِلَ مِنْ شَيْءٍ عَمِلْنَا So anything that he did, we also did sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the importance of the talbiyah is like the importance of the takbir in salah how do we go from one position to another when we're in salah we raise our hands allahu akbar and we stand we start so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started his hajj labbayk allahumma labbayk 
When we go for ruku' we say, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he reached Mecca, the Talbiya stopped. When he was going from Tawaf to Sa'i, Labbaik Allahumma Labbaik. So the Talbiya is like the Takbir in the Salawat. It's important to note that why did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam make this the cornerstone of the act of worship of Islam, the cornerstone of the act of worship of Hajj, the cornerstone of one of the five pillars of Islam, because many of us are only going to be blessed to go to Hajj one time in our life. And we have to realize, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ most people don't believe in God except that they also admit some partners with Him. So when we ponder over the meanings of the Talbiyah, it tells us how our belief is supposed to be, how our actions are supposed to be, and how responsible we are supposed to be to each other and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Majeed wa nafa'ani wa iyyakum bima fihi min al-ayati wa dhikr al-hamid أقول ما تسمعون وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تسنى بسنتهم إلى يوم الدين When the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم started his hajj لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد والنعمة لك والملك لا شريك لك Answering your call obediently O Allah Answering your call you have no partners. To you belongs all praise, all blessing, and all dominion. You have no partners. The reason why this was so important was because the Prophet wasallam, as we said, was sent to people who were still stuck in jahiliyyah. They were still stuck in ignorance. And the greatest of that ignorance was their worship of other than Allah. Even though they believed in Allah, even though they prayed to Allah at times, even though they recognized that Allah was the creator of the heavens and the earth. And if you were to ask them who created the heavens and the earth, and who set the, the, the sun and the moon in motion, Allah, then they will say, Allah. So how is it then that they can come up with these lies? The prime message of the Prophet ﷺ was the same message that we find reiterated through the Qur'an. If we read from the beginning of the Qur'an, what is the first command that Allah gives us? The first command. In Surah Al-Baqarah, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عَبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ أَلَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ O oh mankind, worship your Lord who created you and created those before you so that perchance, that in hope that you gain taqwa. It's not enough just to say that we believe. But belief brings about action. Belief brings about proactivity. Belief, iman, tawheed, brings about worship from us. A man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Ya Rasulullah, ayyu dhanbi a'zam? Which sin is the greatest? Qala Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, an taj'alillahi niddan wa huwa khalaqak. That you make, you ascribe to Allah a peer, not a peer like in Urdu, like a peer, like an equal, that you ascribe to Allah an equal, and He is the one who has created you. 
So Allah has no one over him, no one equal to him, and no one under him. There's nothing stopping you from reaching out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right now. There's no one between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're in need. And this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned these words in the talbiyah. لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ Labba means to answer. When you answer someone, what does that mean? You hear them. When you hear them, what does that mean? You recognize their existence. But you just don't hear them. You actually take action to do what they're saying. And therefore, you love them. You listen to what they have to say. Not just hear. All of our parents have always thought, I know that you heard me, but did you listen? So you're hearing, you're listening, you're loving. You're making your actions solely for Him. قَالَ بَعْضُ الْعُلَمَاءِ التَّلْبِيَةِ مِنَ اللُّبْ That the word talbiya comes from the word lub, which means core, your heart. You're making it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And lastly, anytime you listen to someone and you hear them, you automatically try to get close to them. قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ قَالَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَرَّبَ عَبْدِ إِلَيَّ بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّ افْتَرَضْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ The Prophet ﷺ said that Allah said, My servant will never come closer to me with anything more beloved to me than what? Than that which I have obligated him to do. So if you have not made hajj yet, prepare for hajj. If you have the ability to make hajj and you have not made hajj, then you might be sinful. If you have the ability to answer Allah's call and you have not answered it, we won't talk about, yes, you are sinful, no, you're not. But I'll ask you this, how will you feel on the Day of Judgment? In your list of actions, and you're not able to put a check mark next to hajj because something else was more important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَغْفِرُ أَنْ يُشْرَكَ بِهِ وَيَغْفِرُ مَا دُونَ ذَلِكَ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah does not forgive that anyone associate anything with Him. And He forgives anything other than that to whomever He wills. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ لَبَّيْكَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَكَ لَبَّيْكَ You have no partners. Immediately after answering the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you forget about everything else. You deny everyone else access. You don't allow anyone else to do or say anything that distracts you from Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Allah says to the Prophet وسلم, and it has been revealed to you, O Muhammad وسلم, and to those before you, the call of all the Prophets and Messengers is one. It was revealed to you and to those before you that if you were to commit, admit partners with Allah, then all of your actions would be rendered void. And you would be from amongst the losers. Instead, worship Allah and be from the shakirin. We usually just translate it and we say, thankful. But that's not exactly what it means. The Arab تقول, إذا كان الفرس أو الحيوان شكورا. The Arabs say that when a horse or an animal is shakur or shakir, it's eaten its fill. It's docile. It submits itself to its master. It follows when it's being led. It doesn't buck, it doesn't fight. It's calm, cool, collective, collected, and submissive. بَلِ اللَّهَ فَعْبُدْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Instead, worship Allah and be so full of the ni'mah that Allah has given you that you submit yourselves to Him. إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ Verily all praise and all blessings and all dominion belong to you. We all understand the issue of praise. 
But this issue of blessing, بَلِلَّهَ فَعْبُدْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ Instead, worship Allah and be from the shakirin. Be from those that are so full of the blessings of Allah that they submit themselves to Him and to Him alone. And then lastly, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ الْحَمْدَ وَالنِّعْمَةَ لَكَ وَالْمُلْكَ all praise, all blessing, and all dominion are for you. La sharika lak. We have to remember, it's not just enough to praise Allah with our tongues and have our bodies use that which He gave us to disobey Him. It's not just enough. It's not enough to praise Allah with our tongues to say our prayers for ourselves and to not be proactive and think about the consequences of our actions or our inactions. Sometimes we say, I'm only responsible for myself. But is that really true? The Prophet ﷺ told his Sahaba in this Hajj, بَلِّغُ anni walaw ayah." Relate from me, even if it be one verse of Qur'an. You might think it's ridiculous, but it'll stick with people. I met a woman one time. She said, I had a Muslim boyfriend. And I remember he used to always tell me this one thing, Kool hu wallahu ahad. And he would, I wouldn't accept it, so he broke up with me. It's hard to reconcile. We sometimes think that because of our mistakes, we're not supposed to tell people about what we do. But we have a responsibility. If Allah has blessed you with the blessing of Iman, you have the responsibility to share it with others. We're coming up on the days of Hajj. Let's use the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to act responsibly to ourselves and to others. Let's praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these coming days. Let's remember the blessings that we have. As I was walking here today, I thought to myself, how many people around the world, their masajid have been closed. Their imams have been shut down because they won't tell a certain line. And here, alhamdulillah, all of you have just come from work to pray, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a responsibility because of this blessing to recognize al-mulku lillah, dominion is for Allah. We don't need to fear anyone but Him. We don't need to hope in anyone but Him. And we should be loving Him in Him alone. Allahumma gfir lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana ya rabbil alameen. Oh Allah, Forgive us of our sins and forgive us our transgressions and make our, fo our, our foot, fold, uh, foot, fo foot and make our feet f firm, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma inni as'al, Allahumma inna nas'aluka hubbak wa hubba man yuhibbak wa hubba amalin yuqarribuna ila hubbika, Ya Rabbil Alameen. O Allah, we ask you for your love and the love of those that love you and the love of all actions that bring us closer to your love, O Lord of the world. Allahumma, Allahumma gfir li walidina وَلِأَوْلَادِنَا وَإِخْوَانِنَا وَأَخَوَاتِنَا وَانْصُرْ إِخْوَانَنَا الْمُسْتَضَعَفِينَ فِي كُلِّ مَكَانٍ O Allah, forgive our parents and our children, our brothers and our sisters, and give victory to those weakened from our brothers and sisters in every place on the face of the earth. Allahumma wafiqna لِلْتِبَاعِ سُنَّةِ نَبِيِّكِ وَلَعَمَلِ بِكِتَابِكِ O Allah, give us the strength to follow the sunnah of your Prophet وسلم, and to act according to your books. Allahumma ba'athna muwahideen. O oh Allah, resurrect us on the Day of Judgment, people of Tawheed, people of the Oneness of Allah, people that recognize your praise, your blessing, and your dominion. Allahumma istajib, Allahumma gfir lana, aqulu ma tasma'oon, wa astaghfiru Allah liwalakum wa lisa'anil muslimin, fa astaghfiruhu innahu huul ghafurur rahim, aqim as-salam.